Hey there, I'm Nathan ASMR, and today I'm going to be going through this workshop for TingleCon 2022. So I wanted to do something kind of special here because I think um, I've seen a lot of workshops, but I haven't seen a ton talking about ASMR outdoors or traveling ASMR, ASMR in nature. I think that it can be really daunting and difficult, especially when you have to whisper. But at the same time, there's wind or there's other sounds that you might have in the background that make it kind of difficult to do. So with that said, I wanted to show you my some of my collection of items that I bring with me when I'm doing ASMR outdoors or traveling abroad. And some of these things are expensive. Some of them are cheap. They're cheap, in fact. Um, and so I hope that you can find them useful for whatever you might need to use them for. So to begin with, most importantly, I like to start with a good backpack because you're going to need to be carrying your camera. I've got this backpack here. Let's see there, it's uh, newer, Neuer. And um, I think this is maybe 50 bucks, 30 to $50 US. And uh, I can hold your camera, a couple lenses. Um, a lot of your outdoor gear here, um, some compartments and things. Uh, it's pretty steady. And um, I brought it with me on a kayak. I brought it with me into the, uh, the Everglades, things like that. Um, Napa Valley and, uh, and, and a nice fancy place too. It gives you a great option to hold all your items. So that's the first and most important thing. Next, I like to get my other important thing, which is this right here. And that is the most important thing there is. And that is the phone. So I work for another YouTube channel as, as well as my own. And having a phone to just record um, can just be something that is invaluable. Um, let me turn this around here. There it is. So as you can see, I mean, you can get a really good photo this way if you just get a um, tripod or something like that. And um, an iPhone or even a Samsung Android, um, any smartphone is going to have what you need. Um, and it really does, especially the iPhone, it provides really fantastic results. So next we have our um, some of the things for our phone. Um, and those, these are probably the other important items I get. Um, I have the phone and we have this here. Um, now, as you can see, this is a DJI um, gimbal. And uh, there's a def bunch of different ones. This is the, um, I think it's the number, the uh, DJI, is it Action 5, I think it is, a DJ Ohm 5. This particular gimbal has, uh, looks like it's not charged, but. There are lights on the side of this, um, and they can provide a face light too. I have I found that a little too much glare with that, but um, it is useful. And um, you can use this to, again, get a smooth shot. I like to walk with it really, just almost like this. And you're just walking. Um, you can use it for almost anything. Zooming has a zoom button here. Uh, this runs about $100, $120, I, I wanna say. Uh, you can get it at Best Buy or something like that. Amazon. Um, but I found this to be very useful, especially when you're walking around and you want to get a smooth shot. Um, so I highly recommend that one. Um, there's also other options like a GoPro, uh, which I don't like as much, especially for ASMR. The thing with the iPhone is you can connect um, through this lightning port. You can connect a 3.5 millimeter lightning cable connection, and that will allow you to basically... Um, connect your audio and use a wireless receiver or whatever it is you need to use. So next, I will connect off of this right here. And this is the Rode Wireless Go. And you can see it comes here with two items. This here. So as you can see, this is the connector. I'm sort of blurry there, but this connector here, um, connects to the phone, and then there's the audio jack. This is just a standard audio cable here, and you can plug 
it in there. So this is to put into your, your phone. And then this is, um, so one of these is a microphone. It's an omnidirectional microphone and you can just put it you know, just like this right here. Um, and then, I mean, probably want to put it a little higher actually, but in this instance, um, but it's pretty effective. Um, it does you know, look like that. You can, of course, um, connect a, um, a lavalier microphone to that, but this piece here would then connect. Um, it, it could connect to the 3.5 millimeter jack on your, on your camera DSLR or the back of an iPhone, just like that. And now you've got a wireless audio setup. Um, again, the uh, preamps, I'm not sure if you could call them preamps, but the audio inside the iPhone is not optimal. But again, you can get very good results overall if you do it this way. Um, one other caveat here is that um, you can then take this other device here, another Rode. Rode is a great option. Countryman is another great option for lavalier mic microphones. Sennheiser as well. Um, they can be more expensive, about a couple hundred bucks. This lavalier, as you can see, has a little um, windscreen on it. And um, this is about $100. You can remove the windscreen and put on the traditional cap there, but I like to keep this on just to block the wind. And you can actually put this piece, you plug it in there, and you can actually just keep this in your pocket. And then you've got, uh, you put this up through your shirt with a little tape there and it would be basically hidden. Um, you can see there, it's just basically stained even without tape. So you have to be careful of the wind um, and you need to be careful of the, um, just making sure your back is blocking the wind. Um, and you want it to be hidden just like that. There is a risk of ruffling or rustling of your shirt, um, but I don't find it can be terrible. In fact, for ASMR, it can be relaxing. So again, that's, about $100. There are cheaper ones, but again, I think the really good level starts probably about two to $300. Um, but this entry level one, again, by Rode, R-O-D-E, uh, is pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I like to have is this sort of Rode. I have getting a lot of Rode stuff, but it's because they make good things that are just below pro level or pro level, um, and it's affordable. Uh, we take this here, we take the Rode microphone, and we just basically slide it on like that. This is about $20, and um, kind of gives you just, you could use it, I mean, you could put a little fluffy uh, windbreaker there, but um, you could do man on the street interviews with this, you could record something over there. Um, I just find it very useful to have it on hand uh, because you really can't just like finger this, um, this microphone here without some finger sounds, muffled sounds. Uh, so this kind of helps that and it's quite cheap and again it does have that nice um so so you can actually just take a regular windbreaker and you put it on and you've got yourself uh almost a radio microphone there okay so we're now onto the next thing and that is this right here um this is sort of a uh shock mount for my um microphone here now the microphone i like to use is a sennheiser mkh 416, which is very pricey, um, but Rode does have, I think it's the NT5, NT3. Um, the shotgun microphones are your best bet in terms of just outdoor scenarios. Um, I really like um, having that option, and again, it gives you sort of a directional um, sort of sound capture, which is really important. Uh, the problem with the outdoors is you have so many different sounds that sometimes it's difficult to capture the sound you want. So um, the shotgun microphones are, can kind of pinpoint the sound a little bit better. So uh, that's really important. Um, and then I would stick it right here into this little shock mount to just um, allow me to run and gun, hold the camera um, and move appropriately. So um, that's another thing I like to bring with me. Um, again, I do have another little contraption. This connects to the bottom of my gimbal. But as you can see here, um, so this is like when you have the gimbal in hand, um, you plug in the microphone there. So let me show you this here, but you can see this sort of connects right there. Um, and you have sort of a run and gun setup with the microphone there, which is really, really nice as well. So I highly recommend that combination. 
um, and this little um, dual mount for the road is um, it's just like a regular mount there. So as you can see, I'm using my phone here, but um, you can just see my uh, camera here as the Lumix GH5, and I have um, this 12 by 35 lens on, which is okay. Um, 8 to 18 is also nice for the wide angles, um, for kind of wide shots. I have this built-on um, audio receiver, which is very useful. Um, just you can slip it on and off, uh, and it's the actual GH5 brand, that was about 300 bucks. I think Sony has one, but again, that's uh, pretty much only can be used with the DSLR. So um, this really helps. Um, you can see it's on like kind of a sort of action tripod down there, which I bring with me. It's a Manfrotto. Um, and Manfrotto, again, a good tripod, really um, can cost a couple hundred bucks, or like 150 bucks, I would say, for outdoors because the wind could blow it otherwise, and that's just minimum. If your camera has, you know, a huge rig on it, then it could be different. But that's why I think the phone um, is such an attractive setup because um, it does allow you to do it more cheaply and easy, easier. But having this audio, the real deal, does make a big difference. So another thing I have is this. Um, leveler. I find when you're outdoors and you're um, kind of trying to, uh, let's see if I can get this here. Um, you can see here. Now this also fits onto the, I think it's the, called a NATO mount, I think it is. Uh, but it also fits there. And again, when you're sort of walking, uh, it's sometimes really hard I use this on my other gimbal. I have another one, uh, which is the um, DJI, DJ, DJI, uh, and that is uh, the nicer. It's like maybe it was $1,000 or so. Um, I used it for like real estate stuff. Primarily, I don't use it for much for ASMR. Um, this one is a lot more convenient, um, especially for B-roll and things like that. Uh, but the leveler isn't important. It's a couple dollars on Amazon. You can just type below. NATO, uh, NATO mount leveler. Um, so the next thing we have here, these battery packs. So I can't uh, stress enough how important extra batteries are. I always bring at least two or three with me. Now, these are the Lumix GH5 ones, but whatever your respective camera has. Uh, I also recommend buying a, like an Anchor iPhone, um, just an extra battery. Again, if you're taking footage, uh, especially in ProRes or 4K with your phone, I highly recommend you uh, will get that extra battery and just use it as needed. So those are also very important. So next we have this drone right here. And um, this is the DJI Air 2S. And um, I bought the... It's a sort of a bundle, which has the um, ND filters for like sunny days and things, um, which is definitely very useful. And you get some bad extra batteries, which are these right here. Um, they do take a long time to charge, and so you're gonna want several of them. And with this one, there's also the DJI Mini 2, which just came out, um, which does 4K, and it's amazing. Uh, it's great for getting landscape views. You need to be really careful about just legal stuff, you do need to have it registered with the FAA, which is easy to do online. Uh, you can see right here on my drone, there is a, you would put a tag on it with an identification number. Um, and that is important. So there's a lot of legality there, a lot of, just make sure you cross, jump through all the hoops. Um, but again, it's a game changer. I use it for like uh, shots of myself sometimes, which are really cool above, over the head um, shots or reveal shots where you kind of backing away slowly, um, and they're really amazing for those kind of shots. Uh, there are cheaper options. I do like DJI. Uh, clearly, I have a lot of their gear. Um, what you do is you have this controller here, and um, you just can put your phone right there. And uh, it connects via these cables here, um, lightning cables, as you can see right there. And you can just use this as a controller to um, use your drone. So that's really, really cool too and very easy uh, and it's great for b-roll as well 
And now we're on to a couple more things here. I have four of these. This is an aperture um, light. You can see that's the case. And these are, um, I have them actually on the other side here. I use them in my mobile setup, but even at home, uh, there are several settings. You can see it's pretty light there, but um, you can change the brightness. Um, you can also um, do different hues. You can see that's sort of a blue hue. So if I like to just get like kind of a blue lighting behind me here, um, it's very, very useful for that. Um, there's also uh, different effects too, like a fire, as you can see here, it just kind of gives this sort of fire effect. Now you wouldn't use this these effects for outdoors. I do use them for role plays, but I do really like to have just the lights for um, lighting certain objects or things. Um, so that it sort of matches. So that light is available for about 80 to 100 US dollars on Amazon. I think it might vary per country and everything, but that's a good place to buy it. Um, so we have a couple more items here. This is a boom pole. So what you do here is you, uh, this thing extends. You can hear it, so it has a nice sound to it actually. Um, and uh, you connect the microphone here. And now that I think this goes nine feet or something like that. I mean, I could probably go all the way back to that wall. Uh, but again, uh, I live in Florida, so you're outdoors in the Everglades and you might not want to get that close to that gator. So this 10 foot pole with a microphone on top will absolutely solve that problem. Um, again, it's, it's used in film in those things because you're um, miking talent, but you need another person to usually do that. So um, I primarily use it for the B-roll and things like that, close-ups and stuff like that. So that's really cool. And now I have another item here. And this is another Manfrotto. Um, and this Manfrotto, I believe it's uh, 65 US dollars. I got it at Best Buy. I use this for my mobile. This is a lot of this is for my in studio, but also outdoors. If you want a second camera angle and you have a DSLR, you can use your phone to get to the B-roll. And as you can see here, let's see if we can. That's a nice crinkly sound there. And this is the. And it has a phone connector. Again, you can just kind of put it directly in the slot um, and tighten it here. You wouldn't use this in high winds, but it is very effective to have just as a second option. Um, and again, it's $65, so it doesn't break the bank too much. Now let's check out the last couple items here. Put this here. And this here. And now, I have my next item here, and this is a blimp. Now a blimp is used to block wind. Um, you can actually open it up here. So this is, I live in Florida, so it's almost essential with the high winds here, but really everywhere. Um, this is very, very useful. You're gonna block out all the winds. This, I, I wanna say this probably does about 20 mile per hour winds, something like that. I think there's a lot of variables there, but you can see here, it's just like the shock mount that I showed you earlier, this one. Um, and you basically slide in the, um, you would slide in it just like that. You'd plug in the three prongs, plug in the back of the microphone. And then you just slide it back in and you would close it just like this. And the thing is you would connect your audio cable there. Now you could put this at the end of this boom pole here. This is a very common um, setup here. You can see that that would be a great way to capture audio with no wind from far away. However, uh, you can also um, put this on a regular audio stand um, 
it's really, this thing is, a, no, this is expensive. I'm not gonna lie, it's $400 um, for this blimp. Um, but if you're doing nature, traveling, and you don't wanna just do a voiceover, um, this is very, very effective right here, this blimp. And this one is a road blimp as well. Again, these foam filters, these are only a couple, but a dollar or two on Amazon. Um, they're very useful to have several of these. Um, just any type of wind blocker is really good. And there are cheaper options here, but they're really not gonna do the same. The thing is when air leaks through, it causes a hissing sound. So even if you just get one that's like 90% effective, it's it might even make it worse. So I think it's pretty tough to deal with wind. It's probably the hardest factor. Um, you could just record on calm days, but um, that blimp really works well. Um, and that one specifically fits shotgun microphones. So you also have this, just a fluffy case. So I have two of them actually. So in case that gets really crazy, uh, Arctic, Arctic winds level, um, I like to use these. Um, so you can see they're <laughs> almost like a pillow but I will show you this very quickly. So yeah, these uh, fluffy things, you just put them over the blimp. I have actually just put a microphone or two inside of this, um, but um, yeah, obviously it's not gonna work as well. It's not as airtight, but I've, I've just done it when I, um, this is a little bigger opening here, um, but I've uh, done it when I'm, uh, you know, sort of in a bind. And as you can see here, here's the road blimp connected like that. And uh, you can just sort of see that right there. Ah. But um, yeah, this is sort of how it looks right here. And um, it's just sort of like almost like a soft little fur there. So that is that. And I'm gonna put this over here and my fluffy furs. And with all that said, that's pretty much it. I have some other little items, but I think those are the main things. Again, to touch over it, your backpack, you've got your microphone, you've got your camera, uh, you've got your Rode a Wireless Go, or there's also DJI has one. You've got your gimbal, you, maybe you have your drone, um, you've got, uh, extra batteries you've got some connectors i actually did forget this um, but you never can be without too many audio cables this is a new trick uh, cable these are really expensive um, but they have like a 10-year warranty or something and uh, they're used in the professional setting so you know you're not going to have any issues or hiss so highly recommend having some of these patch cables on your possession as well we also have our lights we have our batteries we've got our lavalier we've got our um, boom pole we've got our um, got our blimp we've got our lights everything uh, we got the camera we got the iphone so it's a lot of different things that go into creating outdoor asmr uh, asmr nature things like that and so i hope that you found uh, this tutorial workshop useful and again all of these items I can put in a link below um, but I think that for the most part they're all very available on Amazon there are some cheaper options but I highly do recommend newer road um, aperture is great for lights um, that's probably my favorite company company a u a p u t u r e um, they do have some pro um, level lights as well that are very huge um, you can use them. I have one here, the, um, the 300X, uh, about $1,000. It can be used outside, um, but again, natural sunlight is just so useful. So um, unless you're having like really issues being blown out by the sun, uh, it's not needed. But of course, if you do bring it with you or have somebody who can help you um, and also have the, the V connector batteries, it will help quite a bit. So that all said, I hope you found this useful and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the TingleCon 2022. I'm Nathan ASMR and I'll see you in the next panel. No, like literally I'll see you in the next panel.